In this chapter, we will have look on film effects smoke simulation and rendering. For this example, I am using default film effects simulation grid and two objects, sphere and torus. I assigned sphere into the object source field and I disabled fuel and oxygen contribution because in this chapter we will have focus on smoke simulation only. For amount of temperature, I am keeping default values. If I will decrease amount of smoke, it will produce thinner looking smoke. If I will increase amount of smoke, it will produce more dense looking smoke. Again, I can use basic forces for more interesting looking smoke shape. But remember that even more important for interesting looking smoke shape are source objects. As example, if I will use as object source torus instead the sphere, as you can see it produced different looking result. And if I will change torus thickness, Again, it will produce different looking result. So as you can see, shape of source objects strongly affecting result. In the second example, I will show you how works color channel contribution. As you can see, this time I'm using object which contains UV mapping and diffuse texture. And I will use this diffuse texture for color contribution. So as first step, I have to use C for the native material. I will use only color channel of this material, where I have to assign mentioned texture. As next step, in object source, I have to enable color contribution. And as next step, I have to assign map, which will control color advection. So I will drag and drop C for the material tag into the map field. As you can see now, it allows me to control which material channel I would like to use for color contribution. I have texture ready in color channel, so I will use color channel. As next step, I have to go to the film effects, simulation, color section, where I have to activate simulate color option. And as next step, I will run simulation. As you can see, currently we are not able to see color contribution yet. So as next step, I have to go to the rendering section, where I have control over fire and smoke visualization. If I will switch smoke color source from gradient to grid, as you can see, I'm able to see now color contribution produced by texture in 3D viewport. And as next step, for better visualization, I will go to the viewport section, where I will increase GPU viewport preview quality. As you can see, color advection produces interesting looking result. And if I would like to change these colors, I can anytime change color texture in C4D material. Different texture produce different looking result and color contribution. So you are able to create colorful and interesting looking simulation. Also remember that UV mapping and tiling are affecting result. So it's important to have correct texture mapping or tiling if it produce unwanted result. As you can see now, we are getting colorful result and all color data are automatically exported into the VDB color channel. In previous chapter, I showed you already how works simulation forces such as vorticity or turbulence noise. But with film effects, you can even more. So as next step, I will use the wind force. As first step, if I would like to use gravity or wind force, I have to be sure that these forces are included in film effects, object sources list field. As next step, I will select wind force. 
and now I have access to parameters which allows me to create wind force or additional turbulence exactly as I need. Also, I have control over wind direction, so I can change wind direction in 3D viewport now. And as next step, I will move source object to create more room for wind contribution. In 3D viewport, we can see now how wind affecting simulation. So as next step, I will change wind direction and I will increase wind strength as well. For wind simulation, I'm mostly using planar type, but if you need, you can use spherical type instead. As next step, I will add small turbulence contribution. And I will increase turbulence scale as well. In turbulence section, you can find also levels, detail scale and details amount, which controls how detailed will be noise contribution. So as you can see, you have really full control over forces and its contribution. Also, you can use force falloff. So force contribution will produce nonlinear contribution to the simulation. It's similar workflow like C4D fields. So as next step, I will resimulate current changes. And as you can see, wind force produce physically correct and also interesting looking result. In the third example, I will show you how to work with colliders. In 3D viewport, you can see object which is using C4D material with texture for color contribution. Scene contains also tube object, which I would like to use as collider. So as first step, for object which I would like to use as collider, I have to assign fume effects collision object tag. In this collision object tag, I can choose object type and collision accuracy. As next step, be sure that Fume Effects Object Sources section contains Collider as well. If not, drag and drop Collision Object into the Object list. And if I will start simulation now, as you can see, Smoke is properly colliding with Tube Object. Remember that colliders are increasing simulation time but also produce interesting looking and physically correct result. Once is your look dev process done, you can little bit decrease spacing values and prepare VDB channels exactly as I showed already in previous chapter. But this time our VDB simulation contains smoke channel, color channel and velocity channel. Also remember that for faster workflow, don't decrease spacing values too much because once is simulation too heavy, it will significantly slow down your computer performance. Scene which I am using for shading, I am sharing with you so you can check out all simulation parameters, lighting or RS volume shader as well. As you can see again, I am using area light because smoke needs proper lighting and volume contribution. As next step, I need volume shader. And I will apply the shader onto the fume effects grid. As next step, I have to assign scatter channel. As I mentioned already in previous chapter, scatter channel is mostly smoke. So I will use direct fume effects access into the smoke channel. Scene is ready so I can turn on Redshift Render View. And as you can see, by default, smoke in Redshift Render View looks more dense and overexposed. And it's because in 3D viewport, I'm not using illumination contribution from lights. Also, if I need to be closer to RS result, in Fume FX rendering section, I can change smoke visualization in 3D viewport. But after months of using FumeFX, I realized that this step is not important 
because only one I have to remember is that Ratchy with lighting produce more detailed and more than smoke than I can see in 3D viewport. And if I don't like amount of smoke in Ratchy render view, I can anytime re-stimulate it with a lower amount of smoke. So always check out your look dev result in Redshift Render View as well, especially before you will run final simulation to be sure that it produces the result which you like. It's time saving workflow. If I'm working on smoke shader, as first step, I'm going to the advanced section where I can control density range. And if I will change new max values, as you can see, it produces different looking result. Also, if I will compare render view with 3D viewport now, as you can see, it produces much closer result than before. And second step is important to have clean result, but also fast response in RS render view. So in case that you see in render view too much noise, go to the Redshift render settings and activate optics denoiser. It will efficiently clean up render view. As next step, for better visibility, I will zoom in. Also, I will use default density range for better demonstration, have lighting and color brightness affecting result. If scene lighting produce overexposed result, I'm supposed to decrease volume contribution. And as you can see, result looks significantly better now. Second option how to avoid overexposed result is to lower light intensity. But remember that light intensity always depends on entire scene and surrounding object. That's the reason why amount of volume contribution is better solution. Another very important factor for smoke look is scatter ramp. Because color saturation and color brightness also strongly affecting result. So as you can see between light intensity, volume contribution and scatter ramp colors is correlation. And you have to find balance between these parameters. For this simulation we have also color channel. So as next step in scatter section, I will assign color channel. I will go to the fume effect section and I will use color channel. And as you can see, color channel will override scatter ramp. So main smoke colors control now color channel. And as next step, I have to improve volume contribution and lighting for better looking result. Also, I will check out density range. Another important parameter for volume shading is absorption. If I would like to have thinner or more transparent looking smoke, I suppose to decrease scatter and absorption as well. As you can see between scattering and absorption is correlation. If I would like to have more dense or opaque looking smoke, I suppose to increase absorption values. And for better, brighter looking result, I will increase scatter coefficient as well. Absorption RAM values can produce transparency variations. So as next step, I will use for absorption color channel as well. As next step, I have to improve parameters and lighting. But as you can see, it produces even more interesting looking result. ACES color space produces better looking and more contrasty result. So for correct result, your scene is supposed to use free point lighting or HDRI lighting or ambient lighting. But currently I am using just one RL light. So as next step, I will use dome light as ambient light. And because I need dome light contribution just for the darkest parts of this scene, I do not need to use any HDRI map. I will use just dome light color and intensity. 
But as I mentioned already, for VDB simulation is important light volume contribution. If I will use too large dome light intensity or volume contribution, it will produce flat looking lighting. So I have to use low dome light light intensity or low amount of volume contribution, which will work such as ambient light, backlight or fill light. These values always depends on the scene type, scene objects and entire scene lighting. Once it's shading down, I can resimulate or replace simulation with higher voxel resolution. Always check out that your simulation contains all channels which you are planning to use. And also be sure that you are using naming which clearly specify what simulation version you are using. Once is final simulation ready, you can work on final shading and lighting touches as well. If you need little bit different color mapping, you can use also tint color. As you can see, it can help with colder or warmer looking result. And as the last step, before you will render it out, check out that the result works on different frames as well. In the next chapter, we will have a look on how to use X-Particle simulation as source for film effect simulation.